Happy New Year, folks, and welcome back to the random video blog where I, Graham G.S. and Matthews, share some stories, give my random thoughts in the world of wrestling, etc., etc. Our first Friday video blog, our first video period of 2016, so a pretty monumental occasion to say the least. So thank you guys for a great 2015, as I've said time and time and time again, my favorite year personally and wrestling related. 2015 was a phenomenal year, but my challenge for 2016 is to make even this year even better than last year. And I'm looking forward to it. So, of course, there's no better way to ring in the new year every single year than with some bold predictions for some WWE and professional wrestling, but specifically WWE here. Um, it's kind of hard to make predictions for TNA when they're not really doing much. I mean, they're debuting on their new network on Tuesday. I'm looking forward to Lucha Underground coming back. I'll be sticking with Ring of Honor in 2016. So there's a lot of stuff to look forward to. NXT... Jeez, can, can, can we just look at NXT in the year of 2015 alone? My favorite promotion along with Lucha Underground, the two biggest highlights of 2015 for me wrestling-wise. And um, one off-bold prediction for 2016 is that I look forward to being SummerSlam weekend, TakeOver SummerSlam, and Raw this year. Now, that's a bold prediction because I was not at Raw last year. At the end of that 48 hours when I was at SummerSlam and TakeOver back-to-back, -back, I was drained, I was exhausted, but it was the most amazing experience of my life, and I look forward to being there once again this year, if I can get tickets, but if I can get tickets and I can make it to all three, I look forward to that. So today's video will not center around bold predictions. I'll probably have an article about, up about that on some website, Hidden Remote, Bleach Report, or whatever, in the next week or two, this month, or something like that. Um, typically, I don't even like doing predictions just because I'm never usually right for one thing, which isn't which isn't a bad thing. We're always, you know, we're, we're wrong most of the time anyway. Or at least I am. And there's really nothing... Um, you know, someone asked me for, like, hashtag Ask GSM. I'm sure someone else is going to ask me for this Monday. Like, what are your bold predictions for 2015, for 2016? I look back at the bold predictions that I made for 2015 in WWE. I think I got one and a half of them right. Um, it's on the first or second hashtag Ask GSM of 2015 if you want to go back and check it out. But uh, I will not be making predictions in this video, but rather giving seven things I want to see happen in 2016 for WWE and NXT. So without further ado, here are the seven things I want to see happen this year. I'm not saying these are realistic goals or like, oh, I want to see Benoit in the Hall of Fame. Like that's something anyone would want to, anyone would want to see anyway. But you know what I mean? Like things I think are somewhat realistic may happen, but just kind of are dream booking, fantasy booking scenarios. So number one being first and foremost, I want to see Dean Ambrose finally win a world championship. He's the only member of the Shield that has yet to win a world title in WWE. Rollins captured his first world title at WrestleMania. Roman Reigns won it from there at Survivor Series and won it back on the night after TLC, becoming the only member of the Shield to win that title twice. Dean Ambrose hasn't won it once, and I'm really hoping that this is the year that finally happens, whether it's as a heel or a babyface, it really doesn't matter. I still say it's too soon to turn him heel because he's so mega over right now with the audience, and he's doing a pretty good job with the IC title, and that's where he kind of belongs right now. But maybe later on in the year, after Roman Reigns and John Cena, Rollins and Lesnar and Sheamus and everyone else is done with that WWE title, Ambrose can get a finally get a run to uh, kind of run wild with the WWE Championship. The second thing I want to happen this year, I want to see happen this year. I said the same thing last year too, and it didn't happen. We were so close to having it happen, but it didn't happen. Cody Rhodes finally returns, and Stardust goes away for good. I do not hate Stardust. I did when it originally happened, when the, when the character first debuted in the summer of 2014. Not that I hated Stardust. I just prefer Cody Rhodes over Stardust any day of the week. Um, even you know now, I feel like Stardust is doing some of the best work as that character. You know, Cody Rhodes deserves a hell of a lot of credit for really dedicating himself to that persona and really making it work. He can be funny at times. He's he's really bringing kayfabe back in a lot of ways and sticking to his persona, even in outside interviews and videos that aren't WWE endorsed and stuff like that. It's very commendable. But that being said, I really honestly think that it's time to bring back Cody Rhodes. Stardust is just dead beyond dead. And that's not to say that Cody Rhodes wouldn't be a jobber either. If Cody Rhodes stuck around and we never got Stardust, who's to say that he wouldn't be in the same exact place, if not worse, than where Stardust is right now? You know, he could be on Superstars, he could be on Main Event. I'm not saying that if Cody Rhodes was to return tomorrow, he would be World Champion within a month. I'm not saying that at all. I honestly think at this point, with only one World Championship, the chances of him ever becoming World Champion, as I believe he deserves to be one day, 
are slim to none with so many other people in contention for that championship, so many other top names. But, I mean, we can never really, I, I will never really truly give up hope until he leaves the company, until he retires. There's always time. He's only 30, 31 years old, so there's plenty of time for him to win the big one in WWE. Um, but I'm really hoping 2016 is the year that Cody Rhodes comes back and we can finally hear, whoa, and uh, I can proceed to mark the hell out. Again, I don't think he'll become a world champion, but I feel like there's a lot more for him to do. People will take him seriously, he can, and he can get above a certain level. Stardust... As dedicated as he is to that character, it's not going to get above a certain level. I mean, he could have the IC title a lot like his brother Goldust did back in the day. But other than that, I mean, Cody Rhodes at least has a chance to become a world champion in WWE. As Cody Rhodes, Stardust, absolutely no chance. And the reason I say that, and a lot of people have made the argument, oh, Cody Rhodes was never over, he's boring as shit. Maybe to some people, just in my personal opinion, I thought Cody Rhodes as himself was great. They gave him a lot of... They dealt him a shitty hand on multiple occasions from dashing Cody Rhodes, which he made the best out of. The mask gimmick, which again, he made the best out of. The mustache thing, which again, he made the best out of. He's been making the most out of everything he's been given over the last five, six, seven, eight years. So why not give him a, you know, a rightful run as world champion down the line? And he was over as Cody Rhodes. I hate when people bring up that he wasn't over. I don't want to go on a full rant about Cody Rhodes here, but he was over in 2013 when he shaved off the mustache, he went babyface, he feuded with Sandow, he feuded with the Authority and the Shield, and he was super mega, super mega over. Even before Goldust came back and he started teaming with him, he was over even at that time before Goldust came back. So I don't want to hear that argument, and I'm hoping 2016 we can finally hear, whoa, one more time. For number three on my list, I might be biased in saying this, but I'm hoping 2016 is the year that Big Show finally retires. Again, I'm... I'm a Big Show hater, I admit it, but I respect the guy. I'm not saying he needs to go die or anything like that. I'm not saying just, you know, the please retire chants are hilarious. I'll be a bit disrespectful. But at the same time, though, there's just nothing left for him to do. He announced on Monday's Raw that he wants to be in the Royal Rumble and not as the number one entrant. He wanted to be the first person to throw his name in the hat, I believe. And that confusion is yet to be cleared up. But from my understanding, that's what he meant by that promo. So if he's going to be in the Rumble, whoop de doo The guy has been world champion, U.S. champion, intercontinental champion, tag team champion. He's feuded with every person in the entire company. The feud with Ryback, I felt like, was the last fresh feud that he had left in him. They got that over with this past summer. And now there's nothing left for him to do. He's pretty much done it all. He's won everything, with the exception of like the Royal Rumble, which should not by any god means happen this year. Um, but other than that, there's really nothing left for him to do. If they want to have him wrestle a few times a year, that's fine. He comes and goes, which is good. But just to have him stick around on a regular basis, facing people like Roman Reigns and fucking John Cena every single week, I can't deal with that anymore. No one fucking cares. I like the guy. He deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. He's a first ballot WWE Hall of Famer. But other than that, I mean, there's nothing left for him to do. So I'm hoping, I don't think it's going to be the year, but 2016 should be, and I want it to be the year. That he hangs up his boots for good. And I know he has like a couple years left on his contract. Not what he said, you know, not from what he said in like promos and stuff. Like, I, oh, I've signed for another 20 more years, which was hilarious. But um, in more ways than one. But uh, he, he said before in the past, I think he signed a contract extension a couple years ago. But even in even if his contract is, you know, is won't run up for another couple more years... He doesn't have to be a member of the roster. Like, William Regal's contract has been going, or, you know, I think expired a couple, maybe last year or the year before that, and I, I believe he resigned because he's still with the company. But he spent the last five years in WWE as a backstage road agent, you know, as a mentor, as a talent scout, not as a wrestler. I mean, he's wrestled a few matches, like Big Show should be, but he's not an active member of the roster. So just because he signed with WWE through the next few years does not necessarily mean that he has to be on Raw, and on SmackDown every single week as a wrestler. So number four on my list is I hope, I'm really, really hoping that 2016 is the year the Hardy Boys finally come back. If Matt doesn't come back, that's fine. Matt's my favorite of the two. Um, always has been, always will be. But, you know, in him being an inspirational icon of mine. But uh, I'm not, you know, going to be unrealistic here in saying that if they, if they had to pick between the two, they're going to pick up back up Jeff Hardy. The guy was a huge draw before he left the company in 2008, 2009. Was mega over with the children. He can sell merchandise, and I believe he still can, even this day and age, after not being with the company for six or seven years. I still honestly believe he can be a huge draw 
for WWE as one of their top baby faces. Again, he's another guy that does not need to be working every Raw and SmackDown. Maybe you can give him a deal similar to that of Jericho and Batista and RVD, where he only works Raw or SmackDown or, you know, not the house shows, but you know what I mean. He's working a very limited schedule. Um, I'm not sure how likely that is based off what I've been reading lately about Jeff Hardy being still being hurt. And he's, in need of, he, he's in need of another knee surgery, which he fucked up, I think, back in May. So the fact he's still hurt is very concerning. Um, he hasn't been hurt before that. That was the first time, I believe this is the first time he's ever really had to take time off for an injury in his entire career, you know, throughout all the bumps and bruises that he's had over the last two, three decades. It's pretty amazing. Um, but even still, I, I, you know, Jeff Hardy's place is in WWE. I've enjoyed his TNA run, maybe contrary to what might, some might believe or what others might think. But in my personal opinion, you know, I've enjoyed TNA. I, I've enjoyed Jeff Hardy and TNA by and large, with the exception of his, you know, his early run where his early days there when he got fucked up in the main event of victory road back in 2011, other than that nightmare, putting that aside, um, he's had a pretty good run there, multi-time world champion, he's had a lot of great matches, so both as a tag team and as a singles guy, but at the end of the day, his time to wrap up his career, his place is in WWE, and uh, Matt too, even if they came back as a tag team, which again, I feel like there's money there in a, in a feud of the Dudley Boys, or the New Day, or the Usos even, stuff like that would be incredible. Um, but that being said, I feel like WWE is where he should end his career. Whether whether it will be 2016 or not, I guess we'll never really know until the end of this year. He's not coming back before the Rumble. they will be on the UK tour, I believe, both members of the Hardy Boys. Their contracts are running up soon, so if they decide not to re-sign, which I think they will because TNA needs them for their new network, and then Kurt Angle's leaving, so they need one top star, one notable name that, you know, um, outsider fans can recognize. So I believe he will resign, but in my dream world, I'm really hoping he doesn't. And both members of the Hardy Boys are back in WWE by year's end. So after that, number five on my list, I'm hoping 2016 will be the year I want to see Finn Balor and Bailey on the main roster. Maybe even throw Enzo Amore and Colin Cassidy in there too as um, the main singles guy, the women. Uh, you know, the woman, the, the diva getting called up. I hate using the word diva, but you know what I mean, for the divas division, and a tag team getting called up. So if I had to pick three people from each category, it would have to be Balor, it would have to be Bailey, and it would have to be Enzo and Cass. I would pick Sami Zayn too, but I feel like he should already be on the main roster because he technically already kind of made his debut back in May. So I'm a little shocked that he has to work his way back up the ladder. Maybe they need the star power for NXT. I just don't think they do. That's another story for another day. Um, but Balor, I've said this since the moment he arrived in NXT, specifically when he debuted that demon attire at Our Evolution, one of my favorite takeover specials with the exception of Brooklyn, which will always be my number one because I was there. But the moment he debuted that demon attire, I said he was a star. He's a fucking star with that face paint. With or without it, the guy is a star. People can easily connect with him. And uh, the moment he arrives, and I made this prediction one year ago. I made it on Twitter. I'll pull it back up in the months to come. But I tweeted out the day after WrestleMania, or that the week following WrestleMania, that the day after WrestleMania 32 will be when Finn Balor gets called up. People said, oh, no, he's a star. He's going to be getting called up a lot sooner than that. They need him on the main roster. And he hasn't been called up yet. He's still done in NXT as the NXT champion. I mean, granted, we've seen people get called up in the past as NXT champions. So the odds of him getting called up before the night after WrestleMania are very, very likely in the Rumble match. But from what I've heard, the plan currently is to do him versus Zayn in Dallas. And they need him as a top draw for NXT until they can, I don't know, get somebody else. Which will also get you on this list. Um, but in the meantime, I, I'm still sticking to my uh, sticking to my guns and thinking that he will get called up the night at the WrestleMania. So if you get if you get Bailey called up, the tag team of Enzo and Cass and Balor called up all in one night would be incredible. And you're not spreading your talent too thin. It's not like you're calling up three women at once like we did with the Divas Revolution with Charlotte, Becky, and Banks. That was too much. I enjoyed it at that time, but in retrospect. Calling up Becky was a mistake. She wasn't ready yet. I felt like she should have, should have spent more time down in NXT. But regardless, um, in the meantime, we currently have, you know, Bailey getting called up on her own. You know, not three women at once. We have the tag team. We, you know, we're kind of filling that little spot in the tag team division. And then we have Balor for the singles, you know, the mid card or whatever. I feel like he should skip the fucking undercard and go straight to the mid card or upper mid card. Because like I said, the guy's a goddamn star. 
So that being said, um, Balor is going to get a huge push when he gets up in the main roster. If they can handle Bailey correctly, she will too. I've said since day one, I wrote an article about it like two years ago about why Bailey will thrive in the main roster as a babyface. So if they can stick with her great gimmick, she'll be fine. And Enzo and Cass will have no problem connecting with the crowd if they can also be booked properly. So I want to see them, all three of those, you know, or four people, I guess, if you want to count Enzo and Cass as two separate people here. I want to see all four of those people get called up to the main roster in 2016. And I know an argument can be made that, oh, they're better down in NXT. But you can't keep... I know a lot of people getting called up has not really been great for them. Take a Neville or a Braze, for example, or an Adam Rose. Bo Dallas, the list goes on and on and on. But they make more money in the main roster. They get more exposure on the main roster. I know they're probably having more fun in NXT, which I've always been a huge advocate of. Whether you're happy, stay there. But they make more money on the main roster. You cannot become a WWE star. I know I already said Balor was a star, but an official WWE superstar until you get called up to Raw and SmackDown. I think these four people you could take a chance with, maybe more so Balor, because I feel like he's going to be great no matter what they give him, a lot like Owens. Bailey, more or less the same thing. Enzo and Cass, I kind of fear for just because they're not the most amazing wrestlers in the world, but their gimmick is just fucking great. So it depends how they're booked and if they're made to look like losers or not. But other than that, I feel like um, their place is on WWE, on Raw, and on SmackDown. Hopefully, coming out of WrestleMania 32. So moving on to my final two, uh, my final two instances here, my final two things that I want to see happen in 2016 in WWE. Coming in at number six, and these are in no particular order, by the way. I should have um, prefaced that at the beginning of the video, but no particular order. Coming in at number six, Kalisto, I really want to see him break out on his own in 2016. I really like the Lucha Dragons. They're a great tag team. Sin Cara is damaged goods. I'm not saying you can't give them a tag team title run at some point, but Kalisto, after that amazing showing at TLC, when, which I was also in attendance for, by the way, and that amazing Salida Del Sol in Boston, there is no doubt in my mind that he is going to go places in WWE. I've been saying this since he arrived in NXT a year and a half ago, two years ago. The guy is very Rey Mysterio-esque. I'm not saying he will be the next Rey Mysterio, but he can really fulfill... I truly believe he can fulfill that vacant spot as WWE's top Latino star. Del Rio is done everything. I don't give a shit about Del Rio. He's a great wrestler, but there was really no point in bringing him back. Kalisto, rather, he can get over without... The Lucha chant, you know, is very controversial or polarizing, I guess. You know, either people like it or they don't. I don't really have a huge problem with it because it gets kids involved. He's a very kid-friendly competitor. He's a great fucking wrestler, and um, his mic skills are slowly improving. With the less scripted shit they give him, I feel like he's improving on the mic. But I'm hoping 2016, even by the end of the year, maybe even by December, he will break out on his own. And as RJ said in his Bold Predictions article, um, hopefully he can win a um, piece of singles gold in WWE in 2016. And finally, the most... Again, these are not predictions, but rather things I want to see happen in WWE this year. I want to see, not things I, I think will happen. Um, but this is the most unrealistic of them all, and just pure fantasy booking but coming in at number seven of things i want to see happen this year in wwe i really 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 want to see aj styles in wwe now i know he's having the most fun of his career in new japan and ring of honor right now had an amazing match with jay lethal in the main event of final battle has had great matches over in japan all year long and in 2014 but after Samoa Joe showed up in NXT and he's had a great goddamn run, I feel like there is really nothing to worry about when it comes to AJ Styles. Like, oh, they're going to ruin his gimmick. He'll be fine. He may not be able to do as many super kicks as he does in Ring of Honor and, and over in New Japan. But other than that, he would get over instantly. The guy's a star, and the time is now. I believe his contract runs up maybe in early 2017, so it might not even be a possibility. Maybe this year, I'm not really sure. Uh, but if there's any time to sign AJ Styles, it would be now as an active competitor, maybe down the line as like a part-time guy, but which I don't know if he could land because he's never been in WWE and he's no Sting. Um, you know, Sting was never in WWE, but he got the part-time gig that he did because he was a huge star in TNA and, and, and specifically WCW and people already knew who he was. AJ Styles, I feel like, is a big enough name from TNA that people would know who he is. A lot like Samoa Joe, people already know who he is. He got a big pop, not only in NXT, but... When he did that one-off um, NXT match that was taped in Providence, I think, for an N NXT show right before a SmackDown taping, people recognized who he was, and he got a nice, generous little pop. 
So I'm hoping that we could see Samoa Joe hopefully get called up this year too. And I'll be doing, like I said, another bull predictions article for some other website at some point in the next month or so. But AJ Styles, I would absolutely love to see in NXT. And I said, like I said, after Samoa Joe arrived in NXT, I said to myself, if AJ Styles came to WWE, my wish list of people I would love to see in NXT would be complete. Um, I'm not saying he has to go to the main roster if they just kept him down in NXT to add momentum to the brand like Samoa Joe is. I'd be completely fine with that too. The matches he could have with Balor, you know, stemming from their history in the, in the Bullet Club, which would be amazing. Which they could also touch upon. They've touched upon the history of of Zayn and Owens from the Indies, so it's very, very possible. WWE is well aware of that stuff. They won't mention TNA shit, but everything else is, you know, there's no holds barred. So everything else is good game. is, is free game. Um, but anyway, yeah, they could, he could have great matches with Balor, a Tommy, Joe, don't even get me started the matches those two could have, now that Joe is more motivated than ever, and again, his age is technically an issue, he's like almost in his 40s now, but the guy's a great goddamn wrestler, he would be over instantly with that audience, and uh, he could have a nice little run for himself, albeit even if it's for a year or so in NXT to add momentum to the brand, as Triple H have said, or, you know, as Samoa Joe has said, which would be fine, I'm not expecting him to get a mega main event level push, um, in the main event of WrestleMania on the main roster, but even if they stayed, kept them down in NXT, there's no reason, there's no excuse not to at least consider signing him. I know he may decline it, but WWE should at least make an offer. Maybe they have, I don't know, but he said in the past, even after he left TNA, and even as soon as a couple months ago, that WWE never reached out to him. Maybe he's lying, but from my understanding, they never really reached out to him, which I think is a shame. The guy is an absolutely amazing competitor and one of the best ever to never be in WWE. I know he wrestled like a one-off match on Jacked or Heat or whatever, but with the exception of that, under a full-time contract to WWE as a main roster performer or NXT performer or whatever. Um, he's one of the very best to never be signed, so I'm hoping that 2016 is the year that we see AJ Styles in 2016. So maybe I'll look back on this video a year from now and just laugh at myself, you know, all these things I want to see happen and not one of them will. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. We'll go back on this video a year ago from, um, a year from today on January 1st, 2017 to see if anything's, any of these three things, any of these seven things happened, um, in WWE and we'll make one of these videos, uh, an, uh, an annual tradition going forward right here on the video blog on the YouTube channel. So with that being said, guys, as always, thank you for watching our first official video of the new year. We had a great 2016, and, un and another goal I have for myself in 2016 is that um, I'm hoping to finally reach 1,000 subscribers. We're well on our way. We're a little over 810 or around that mark, so it is a realistic possibility, a realistic goal to have for the end of 2016. Only time will tell. But in the meantime, and in between time, guys, you guys can follow me on Twitter at WrestleRant. Find me on Facebook at facebook.com backslash graham.gsm.matthews. Visit the website nextearwrestling.net for full reviews of Raw, SmackDown, Main Event, NXT, Superstars, Ring of Honor, Impact Wrestling, and everything else in between. Lucha Underground as well, and that comes back later on this month. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. All support is greatly appreciated. Have a very happy new year. I'm looking forward to an even more amazing 2016 after a phenomenal 2015. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. Have an amazing 2016, guys. I'm Graham GSM Matthews, and I'll catch you folks down the road.